Jurassic Parker. What's going on, everybody? This is your boy, Jurassic Parker. Yo, we are here. This is the fifth, the day after the fourth, May the fourth. We are here on Revenge of the Fifth. And this is the Bear at Night podcast. So, hopefully my air, my earbuds will be working right. Um, we're talking Star Wars. Star Wars. That's what we're talking. Um, anything and everything. Any and everything to do with Star Wars. How we love. How we hate. How we really hate some of the things that are really happening <laughs> with the Star Wars franchise as a whole from A to Z, honestly. So, um, first off, uh, hold on, get my friend here, Lola. Lola, hold up. Is it, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? Oh, okay. All right, say hey, Lola. Say hi. Say hi, Lola. Yeah, see? All right. I don't know what she's doing now. But, put her over here. But, yes. I don't know any of what any of that means. One thing, how do we, how do people in Star Wars know what the robots are saying? Because I don't know what any of these bebops mean at all. <laughs> what up, Mr. Eight Bars, Daryl? What up, bro? Say hey, everybody. What's going on? So, I know I got some people supposed to be coming up on here to chat for a second, but this is about Star Wars and this. <laughs> <laughs> and we would be um, chatting with some people, you know, if you want to, you want to chime in on some things, get something off your chest, because I know yesterday this thing's really going off. Okay, all right. I think I think Lola has a problem too with Star Wars. Maybe that's what is going on. Maybe she got something got to get off her chest. I don't know. It's language called by here. Well, I didn't know that, Daryl. I... Yo, she's this thing's freaking out over here. Is I must have hit her nerve or something. But you know, as a fan who grew up watching Star Wars, especially from it all, it all started from the original Star Wars, like Sci-Fi Channel. So watching Sci-Fi Channel, um, and it had Star Wars Week. Didn't know anything about Star Wars. And then to come and, you know, watch it the whole week, fell in love with it. Um, this is before the special editions, before they start adding little things here and there over the years. It was just the original cuts, the original copy of the show. I mean, of the movies, the original movies. It actually was kind of darker, too, in, in tone, as I think about it now, versus what they done you know mess with over the years so i have here like the original copies of the vhs of you know new hope and you know well yeah uh, new hope and return to jedi all that stuff these are the original cuts without all the special editions which i love the most um i would like to get these um converted over you know, without all the special effects and stuff. But watching the Star Wars and falling in love with it and following with all the characters, you know, from top to bottom, Star Wars as itself, as a whole, the first movie of New Hope is a complete movie. You know, honestly, they didn't need to do a second or third, but they had a plan. We have now several different iterations. I mean, even yesterday, what we just got... Uh, a new season of Star Wars Visions and I'm still currently watching it right now and I'm, you know it's alright it's alright it's some, a couple of the episodes I do like stop motion and some of the episodes right now has some stop motion 
parts in it. So I do like that part. Um, as for the rest of the show, I mean the whole franchise, I hit a nerve yesterday when I posted, and I knew I was I, when I found the when I found the meme. I think I think it was last month. I held it just for yesterday, and it was about Finn and the new sequels, the new franchise of movies, of the big buildup that we had for. Uh, for Star Wars, uh, the next generation. Uh, that's what I like to say right now. Like, that's what it was. It was a new generation of Star Wars uh, characters. You know, out with the old, in with the new. The fact that we got uh, my boy John Boyega showing up right in the crack of, the, like, right in the beginning of the trailer. Like, it was dark, and then it's like, bam, John Boyega. You get a black man. In a stormtrooper outfit. One one thing you never see the stormtrooper without outside of his helmet, and the fact this outside of a helmet is the black guy. Shocks everything. You have on so many levels of shock at that moment. At just at that moment, you get the whole thing with the trailer and all the nine. You know the whole thing, and then it's that part where you see this man with the lightsaber, John Boyega. Finn, his character Finn, who's an ex-stormtrooper, who finds out, you know, well, he feels that after he, he's he been a, a stormtrooper, you know, a first order, that he doesn't feel right. What they're doing is wrong. He's not just a cog in the system. He's not just a robot just doing and taking his orders. He actually feels something. And then that's when, I guess, the Force... He, you know, his force sensitivity, you know, kind of rises up and, like, takes over to make him, like, you know what? I'm done. I'm good with this. And then we get this moment where we see this man, like, what is, you know, with a lightsaber. You see a black dude with a lightsaber. You Okay, so what's going on here? Like, it's not like it's uh, Mace Windu at all. This is not... None of that is a whole different character. He was a stormtrooper. Then you know he got out of that, and now he's a, a, a Jedi, like he or he's about to be a Jedi. All these things happening, like yeah, you have the other stories with Ray and stuff, but and Poe Dameron and all that, which is cool and all, whatever. But that moment you get, you get a story out of nowhere that doesn't have anything to do with a Skywalker, anything, and it's this black guy with a lightsaber who was a stormtrooper that right there in itself is a whole thing you could do and then you see the movie it's all right you know he's he, you know you, you like him he's easy to uh, to to relate to easy just he's he's just an easy person to just just fall in love with as a character as a whole you see a lot of yourself in him uh, you see a lot of yourself, you know, in this character. You know, he just he's just relatable, and it's just a difference. It's just a big difference from what we've seen before. And then he picks up that lightsaber, and it was pretty much that whole entire moment of the uh, the trailer. And he did not know how to use a lightsaber. It is like, oh wait, Ray is gonna use the lightsaber. Oh, okay. That's that's cool, I guess. All right. But they just left this man out. And you think, okay, maybe, just maybe, he's going to come back around. He's going to go into his bag in the second movie. Second movie hits. Nothing again. They put this man on a wild goose chase with this new girl, who's also a force-sensitive person. Um... Yeah, she's force sensitive, and uh, I guess she is, but she's against the force. And you, as a matter of fact, she had a whole backstory where her sister, right in the beginning of the movie, her sister shows up. And I mean, her sister's in the beginning and dies and all that stuff. Sorry, spoilers. But you see the whole connection. There's a whole story right there that's in a book that is really dope. She has a whole story that could be a movie, too. But they're, they go on this whole wild goose chase while everything's about Ray. They go to this casino and all this. They go on, you know, 
they're you know on horses and whatnot space horses I don't see anything to do with nothing to do with Finn becoming a Jedi nothing and so it's, it's just like we just ignore that he's kind of forced into this sensitive like just ignore it all we don't care we just gonna you know put him over here so we can put all this stuff away or we just like you know yeah we thought about getting him like be a love interest for Ray but we just decided against it and put this whole thing with you know Kylo Ren and the whole crap now you take all that away from him you take the cool stuff away you know he, he still tries he still tries his best and then by the third movie just any hope of this man being a Jedi at all is just thrown away. This man the whole time is yelling Ray the whole time. The whole time. And yes, yes, Daryl, wasted potential. So much wasted potential. It was hurt this it was heartbreaking to see this character have a cool build up. And then just just gradually over the time frame over the years just just go away it sucked like i thought maybe at this moment at that moment where they gave ray that you know in the second movie even though i know it was from a different director and they held a whole thing with the movies but i like the idea that ray was not related to anybody she was a nobody meaning she did not have to be related to a main character from what we knew before because the thing is, they let they put that whole thing as anybody could be as force sensitive. Can you know everybody has it type of thing, the metachlorines or whatever. But if you don't have to be a Skywalker or Palpatine or a Solo, whatever, to be a a, a, sky, a sky no sorry to be a Jedi. You know, as we saw in the Old Republic stuff and the Council stuff, there's different species of aliens and everything that are Jedi that are force sensitive but yet they keep putting this the, like they keep putting the magnifying glass on the whole Skywalker thing the whole prophecy thing and it's like it doesn't matter that they, they, they told a story there's more stuff out there and they just had to make Ray something and why they do that they just take a chance they just did all that it just took a big old dump on 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 Finn even even uh what's his name uh Poe sheesh I would thought Poe would have got a chance to be uh a Jedi or something like you know but they kind of really made him they turned him by the third by the third movie they turned this dude to a Han Solo type real fast like just no no just no apps and buts about it. This dude was a Han Solo, and that's what it was. Him and his his boy, his uh, his uh, bromance with Finn, like that was it with him. And then this whole thing with um, his Power Ranger girlfriend, ex girlfriend, thief chick with the helmet. But that's that's another story. But when it came to Finn, by the third movie, he's just yelling out Ray the whole time. He's nothing special. He's just a guy that felt a little different and just said, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want to do this no more. I'm going to just go on this whole adventure. And that's what they just made him to be. And then he was just this love sick pony over, over Ray. Like, that was it. That was his whole, his whole thing. His waste, all his potential just gone and wasted, pushed to the sideline. It's just, it, it just sucked. It just sucked. Like, I was really hoping for so much more with, with Finn. He had, matter of fact, his whole thing with, um, was, uh, what's the, the big silver chick? I can't think of her name. If y'all might see, you might know it. Um, but chick who played in, um, Game of Thrones. But there's a whole story there. There's a whole story with that guy, uh, that Stormtrooper with Traitor. You know, you like, Traitor! You know, that guy. Um, it's like, what other stories could they have been you know, you could have put backstories on on Finn of how he became a stormtrooper and all that stuff, but you didn't. Uh, they showed that there were other stormtroopers that broke out like Finn, 
but and like oh we heard stories about you so you don't put more into the emphasis of he was an inspiration for other people to do it too like that he is at least if he's not gonna be a if he's not gonna be a jedi that we all hope at least let him be a real true hero inspiration in his own right by doing what he did for other like for himself but inspiring others and stuff like that but they didn't do that they didn't make him be like they didn't really want to show him as a hero as well they put all the emphasis on ray everything was on ray and honest to god nobody cared about ray nobody cared about ray ray was like you know what ray hold on uh ray to me is like the chick from Twilight. They put all this big fuss over her, but there's really nothing special about her at all. Like, she's just a, white, a, a, a cute little white girl. That's it. Like, that's it. That's that was her purpose. That was her purpose. Like, we need to sell more girl toys or something, or girl power. Like, they really try to, like, with Ray. They really try to push that narrative of uh girl power and all that like they never had it before with princess leia or padme queen amidala they we didn't have any of that before like in the movies like that's never un that was unheard of before but yet ray is like the first ever female to hold weight in the star wars universe which is total bs but they did that and it's like well, a big F you to the women who was before her, like Padme and and, and, and Leia. And, like, what's their name? The the chick for the Rebels. God, I can't even think of the name. And they put a, they made a, a real bigger story for her in the, uh, uh, the new show, All Around or whatever, or, uh, the Rogue One TV show. Still haven't seen it yet. Uh, I don't know why. I just don't appeal to me to watch it, because I already know what happens to the main people. I saw Rogue One. I saw Star Wars. I know what happens to them. They tell you right in the beginning of Star Wars what happened. Um, Hanja, what up, bro? What up? Let's see, all right, well, CJ, what up? What's Jake say? We're just waiting. Vaughn, what up, Vaughn? What up, Vaughn? What's going on? Okay. Linda comments, what's going on? So, if y'all want to chime in, let me know. I plug y'all guys in. Um, you know, because I know, I know, I know a few of y'all got some things to say to get off your chest about this. I know. I feel. I, I already feel it. I already feel it. But Ray was just not it for me, and he really pushed this narrative, and that's why I, I think I, most like a lot of people sit to my stomach to know that they're bringing Ray back. For this new run of stuff that they try to do, it is like, didn't you not stab us enough before with Ray? Not, why you want to just go in and just squeeze and, and tamper with the scars more? Like, come on, man, why? Um, let's see, why would you, those three movies were really show Disney really had no true vision of the franchise. Stayed the park. Yes, that's what it is. They had no real vision of the franchise. When they bought it, they just thought another IP to make money off, make money off, which understandably as a company, as a corporation, because at the end of the day, Disney is way beyond the family friendly, wholesome, you know, homegrown thing entity that was in the beginning back, back, back in the day when it was a lot of f up stuff too going on, but it was it was a smaller situation. It was only run by it was run by a guy, not a corporation. Um, it's not that no more. It's a corporation that owns stock, got that basically has Florida on lock. You know, um, that's that just owns everything, just about everything. You know, they but they are literally monopolizing the country of <laughs> the industries right now. And it's really nothing anybody can say because they have the money. Uh, pretty soon, they, who knows? They might just buy Netflix just because they can. Honestly, who knows? But 
that's neither here nor there. Netf I mean, uh, Disney just bought the stuff because of the IP, the intellect, the intellectual property because they could sell. They could sell so much with that, uh, especially with the, the 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 merchandise and all that. Just the name alone, you could put Star Wars in a hat and it would sell. Just think of everything else they could do, and that's what happened. They made these movies, and they just they just had a like. When we did the first uh, episode one, two, and three, there were years. There, it wasn't just put out right after the next one. They like they took at least what four or five years to the next one. Like I was a kid when episode one came out. Uh, by the time I think episode two, uh, like I think I was in middle school by that time. Uh, probably like Revenge of the Sith. I remember this to this day. I was literally, it was my graduation day, my senior graduation, and I went to go see that movie with a friend of mine after everything was done, and we went to go see that. So. That's it. Took it's years. It's been years in all of this, um, but these right now they just keep pumping everything out. Much like the whole Marvel thing. We this is what Disney as a whole has a huge issue right now with how they're pumping out content, and it's starting to show. The cracks are starting to show, um, and you know there was a time where we were all like, you know, even they, they had a documentary. Uh, about George Lucas, you know George Lucas is, is ruining Star Wars. Now looking back, hindsight twenty twenty is as much as I hate him, hated for him to be going and tampering with the the minute little things of the original movies, just so they could kind of relate to the episode, you know, one, two, and three stuff. Um, is nothing in comparison to what uh, Disney is doing right now with the Star Wars brand. Like, it's just not the same anymore. Like, uh, I know that George Lucas has some, you know, some consulting situations. He could do that. But it's just not the same. Like, even right now, if you look at The Mandalorian, yeah, it was, it was all right. It was good at the tail end of the show. But now it's just like, it was it was just kind of bittersweet. It's like it was good, but it could have been better, you know. Especially that you know, you know, uh, Pascal visit wasn't in the suit as he was in the previous season. Even though you know there's gotta be stuff people in them most of the time. Anyway, they they just basically did the Power Rangers trick of just having a stuntman in the suit, and then the rain the real actor is gonna go in the booth and just voice over everything. But beyond that, you know, that's why you didn't see him at all have his mask, his helmet off. That was like a huge thing. Um, but you can tell with that. You can tell with, God, Book of Boba Fett. Like, hello, B Boba Fett. Like, things are happening behind the scenes that are sucking the life out of Star Wars right now. Um, like, I hate the fact that we're going to get Ray back in this series. It would have been way dope. Way more dope to get John Boyega back, uh, even though John and and also Oscar Isaac um, just they did they wasn't really treated that well uh, as I as I heard as I read and did research before they really wasn't treated that well during the process of these movies um, because of their background um, and it kind of shows at. You know, really, 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 when you really think about it, it kind of shows how bad things could have had been behind the scenes because their characters were like at a high point in the first movie and then just started to slow down by the third, by the second, third, by the second movie, and then by the third movie, it was just all about Ray and Kylo Ren. And I feel like if you're going to do something with Star Wars like that, like with a new cast, and you want to start a new Jedi stuff, at least it could have been like two, you know, Ray could have been a Jedi. Yeah, whatever. Give her, you want to give her that, that's fine. But Finn could have had that too. You know, it could have been two new 
you know, Jedi's and or whatever that little boy was with the broomstick in the at the end of the second movie. That could have been something if you wanted to do that. Um, but they didn't. They didn't expand on it. Like I was hoping maybe for the third one, maybe we'd had a little mini school, you know. But we didn't. And freaking, we had. Matter of fact, speaking of school, you brought back Mark Hamill. You brought back Mark Hamill. We that was the big thing in the second, the first movie. And then the second movie comes. We get Mark Hamill again. We're gonna, we're gonna. This is gonna be great because I was really hoping for Mark Hamill in this one. And he just does a lot. He just throws a lightsaber. Like it didn't mean nothing. That was like the biggest heart heartbreaking moment for me when I first watched that movie. And I think I was with Daryl and James when we watched this movie. Um, yeah, that moment really sucked. And matter of fact, it was wrong. I think it was was it my birthday that came out at the time. But it sucked to see that because this is a guy that we all love and cherish. Like he's our hero, Luke Skywalker. You know, and he just throws eh, away and start drinking blue. Elephant milk, titty milk, something. I don't know what that was, that creature. But that, that's we got this hermit now. You know, this older guy. It, it was... Uh, and those little por the porks. That was another thing. They they forced these porks on, on the screen to try... Oh, look, isn't it cute? Don't you want to buy one? No, we don't. Kill them. Nobody wants these things. Stop trying to force these things on us. Um, oh, I hate that movie so much. Which one? Which one did you hate, Vaughn? Which movie did you hate? Uh, you, you forced the poor things. That didn't go the way you wanted, like, the Ewoks at all. Uh, at least Ewoks had some type of violent tendencies, because, you know, they were cannibals, so people forget that part. Um, these horrors is just annoying, and they just kept putting that in all the parts of the movie. Um... It just just sucked to see. I didn't want to see Porridge. I didn't want to see this old man, uh, Luke Skywalker, in this sense. Like, he just said, fuck it all, type of thing. I, I hated to see that. It just sucked to see this guy just drop, like, fall from grace. But he has some cool moments, like, with the being a Force Ghost and all that, as he's meditating. And I did. There were some things I didn't know you could do as a Jedi that I found that they did in this movie. That I guess they use now they got the retcon, these little things that they've done in like, you know, Star Wars Visions or whatever retcon TV show they gotta do now. Or like Ahsoka. Like that's the only thing I'm looking forward to is Ahsoka and the Star Wars thing right now. Cause it's it's promising. It's promising. I love Rosario Dawson. Ahsoka's a cool character. I hope they treat this character right. And I really do hope. Um, what is it? The second one with Mark. Yes, right? Yes. The second one Mark Hamill, it sucked. Um, I mean, I love the fight scenes. Don't get me wrong. Some of the, the action scenes were dope, I will say. But, you know, and I, matter of fact, I kind of, you know, I like, in a way, I kind of like the, some of the direction that we, we, that we got in that second movie because it was a different director. Um, I like some of the direction we was going in there with that movie versus what we got in the third movie. The third movie was like, what are we going to do now? Because we don't screwed up everything with the second movie, but they didn't know how to like carry that torch and bring it in to a different, you know, level and like carry on. Like, yeah, see, yeah, she's not with nobody. She's not, Ray is nobody. She's a no name. She's a regular person, just force sensitive, but yet they had to tie it back with the second one, I mean, with the third movie, somehow to make her special. Like, she couldn't be special on her own at all. That's stupid. But they did that anyway to just make her be somebody that we still don't care about, honestly. Uh, Ahsoka was the homie. Yes, Ahsoka was the homie. Matter of fact, in the connection with Ahsoka, I'm looking forward to that because of everything with uh, Rebels and... Clone Wars and everything. I, I just want to see that. Oh yeah, speaking of that, because going back, I hate going over the place. I'm, I'm all over the place with this, but it's Star Wars. As long as Star Wars related, it's fine. Like Lola, one of the coolest things I liked in uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. And that's not saying much at all. 
because the Obi Wan Kenobi show was uh, what's a nice thing to say something mean? What's a nice way of saying something mean? But you want to give it a compliment, but barely a compliment. But you want to say they tried, but they didn't really try hard enough. Matter of fact, they like it's like they lost. Matter of fact, it was they were a participation trophy. That's what it was. The Obi Wan Kenobi show was a, a participation trophy. We thought, uh, we thought it was going to be something fun, and it didn't. It just didn't live up to what we hoped for. I thought we might be getting Obi Wan on some missions or something like some lost tapes type stuff, but we didn't, and we got young Leia. That should have been for one episode, maybe just one episode. She got lost, she got, you know, missing, and he came and, you know, found her. That would have been the first episode or whatever, and that's it. She don't know who he is. Still, that's fine. But you do all of this just to still not make it match to what's happening in the future by A New Hope. when she's like, I never met Obi-Wan Kenobi. Like, mind you, she's never met obi uh, Princess Leia and Obi-Wan has never met the whole time in the series, like he died in the in the first one, when he when they get when she got rescued, she still she only saw a glimpse of him as they were running, and then he was dead already. That was it. Like there was nothing else. So for them to have this whole thing and his whole name and stuff, and it's like Obi Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope, and you know, or it's just it just didn't hold no weight like it should have, like. It should have never been there. And the little girl, she was cute. She was adorable. But she got the little legs. She got the little legs. And she's running faster than the grown adults in the forest. Like, how? How? This, she, how you let this little girl run faster than you? She has little small legs. And jumping and dunking, like going under the trees and stuff. And you guys couldn't get her? You couldn't pick her up? Like, She's a child. She's like four or five years old. Like, you couldn't just grab her. You couldn't just... I don't understand. That was stupid to me. Uh, and then they just kept this character going. And then they had the Reva character. Good God. The Reva. Um, I, I, gave, I gave her hope. For, because she's black. I was like, okay, we're going to do something different. We, we, we got something here. We're, let's see what she's going to do. Let's give her a chance. And there were some parts her acting was cool. Then there were some parts that... I, I Maybe it's the direction. Maybe the director's, you know, telling her what to do, what to say. But it was not holding up. And then her character just... Her whole character art did not hold up for me. It just should have never been there, honestly. Like, her character should have died... Three weeks before, you know, the, the this whole show even started. Like, oh yeah, Reva, yeah, she was somebody that we knew and she died. That was it. Not all the stuff that we had to get with her. That was stupid. That was freaking stupid. No one cared. Like, her little thing of, I'm, uh, spoiler alert if you haven't watched it, but too bad. Um, she, she survived... The order, uh, the order six 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 whatever, or if I'm saying it right, order sixty six, order ninety nine, whatever. Um, the whole purge, the whole Star Wars purge with the with the Clone Wars, the being the Clone Purge of the younglings and everything. She survived just to be a part of the First Order or the the whole Empire, or whatever. Just to be a part of the Empire and. Just so she get, get all the way to the ranks to get close enough to kill Star uh, to kill Darth Vader, the man who killed all her friends, Anakin. That's Order sixty six. Yes, I'm saying six six six. I don't, whatever. But <laughs> Order sixty six. She her whole plan was to get to the top of the ranks of all these people just for her to take out Darth Vader, who killed all her little young friends and everything. She did mean stuff. Killed people, killed kids, froze everybody, just to have a hero moment later. But negate the, the fact that she, 
did a lot of villainous stuff. I mean, I understand you're going undercover with stuff. You, you're doing all that. But you're going undercover and you're still going with the plan of as long as I get mines, I'm sorry for everybody else. Like, I'm going to get mines, but y'all got to die because I can't, you know, divulge my secret, uh, my true identity. And mind you, the whole time, Anakin, a.k.a. Darth Vader, Darth Vader, he knew that he knew who she was this whole time. Like he knew, so he was playing her for years. And he had, matter of fact, he was toying with her. So as she got to these ranks, she thought maybe if she thought it was just her doing all this, she's getting there. Maybe so, but Darth did it. Like no, let's bring her up, you know, because he's he's having fun. He's toying. He's he's waiting for the slow burn. That's that man has a lot of patience. He has a lot of patience. I will give Vader that. He has a lot of patience to to mess with people to get the uh, to get the gotcha bitch moment at the end. Like he waited years for the gotcha bitch. You thought, nah, you're dead. But then I don't really kill you because you know it's Star Wars and it's Disney, and we gotta have you come back and try to be a hero somehow. But you don't. You try to like kidnap. Luke Skywalker as a kid, I mean, yeah, as a kid, who should not be knowing anything about what's going on, or about the Force, or about Obi-Wan, all this stuff. It was just a clusterfuck of, of just, we don't know what we're doing, we're just like, we're just throwing darts to the wall, that's what we're doing, we're just throwing darts to the wall, and we're just gonna see what sticks, and that's what we're getting for this, and that's, well, so once again, going back to the new three trilogies, we got with these movies, especially the third one. Um, like, it just sucked. It's, everything just sucks. Everything just sucks. The only thing I would say now, right now, in the Star Wars franchise, is possibly like, Star Wars Visions is cool because we are seeing different takes and different ideas, which I kind of, like, with some stories, I kind of want them to, like, expound on it. They could do a whole show on some of these things. Um, because I'm just tired of seeing everything all about the, you know, the Vaders and, in freaking, uh, and the Skywalkers and the Palpatines and the, we don't have to keep retro, like retconning everything. Um, but also it's just, it's just, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a really, it's really a lot. You know, they're just doing so much. Uh, but there's a double edged sword to this whole thing too. And this is something I don't think a lot of people talk about. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Are the Star Wars fans... Yes, I said it. The Star Wars fans... Now, I'm a... I love me... I love my Star Wars. But I'm... And I... You know, I went to... I went to Disney and... My main goal was to go to... The... Uh, the Galaxy Sedge. And I had a great time... Seeing the Millennium Falcon in person was amazing, the food sucked, uh, the blue milk and stuff, that was fine, but the, the restaurant they have there, I'll tell you right now, if you ever go, don't go, go somewhere else, because the food really sucks, they really want to make everything taste like sand, because you will be thirsty, everything's dry, it sucked, but that's, that's neither here or there, we're going back, um, the fans, like, I love being a Star Wars fan, but I also hate being a Star Wars fan, sometimes, because, you have some of these hardcore fans that are just evil. Like, where they be, you know, saying to other, to the actors that they don't like them being super racist and just everything. The, or, you know, they're so, they so in the details of minute little things that doesn't match from 45 years ago, something like that. Uh, because it doesn't, you know, maybe get their own break. They don't make whatever thing they had back then. From back then, they don't make it now, whatever. But they so intricate in certain things to the point where they be jerks and assholes. And I don't care for those types. Um, you know, it's just not my thing. It's just not my thing uh, for those to be just like that. I love my Star Wars. I'm not going to... I can't say I, I collect a lot of Star Wars stuff because I would just go super broke. Um, I get what I like, um, but the Star Wars community can be really, like, you think, like, 
if you thought like Beyonce's fans or Nicki Minaj fans were hardcore and they fight for you know the you know the Beehive or the Rihanna fans, all that stuff, they have nothing compared to. They are nothing compared to Star Wars fans. Nothing. They, Star Wars fans could be ruthless. They could be heartless. They don't care. I've seen, I've read some of the things that they don't said to each other on message, messenger boards and stuff, and it is screwed up. It's so screwed up. Like, even if you, especially me being a cosplayer, the amount of stuff they are so particular with when it comes to the costumes, like, you know, being a stormtrooper, being uh, uh, a Mandalorian, being a Jedi, uh, being a Sith. Which I feel like being a Sith is like the best thing you could do if you want to be a cosplayer because you can just make your own whatever. You just put some horns and just have red eye, you know, red skin or you know, as long as you have some yellow eye eye contact lenses and basically damn near black everything. Maybe something dominatrix esque, whatever leather type of stuff. You that you're a Sith, you're good, you're fine. Just get a red lightsaber, you're good. But anybody else that's, you know, uh, you know, regular Sith Lord, um, you know, not Sith Lord, but uh, on the dark side, the Empire and everything, the fans would de highly detailed, be highly, you know, they, be, they would destroy every detail of a fabric of your costume if it's not grade A matching what it should be. Honestly, and it's not a bad thing. Some people are cool, they're, you know, who cool, whatever. But some, just if it's not it, if it's not matching, then you ain't worth shit. Like, oh, these ain't first order uh, boots or whatever. Get the fuck out. You know, uh, that's just how some people are. You know, they they so particular with the shows and the movies and everything. They just and then how they treat the actors. Where they made the the girl from the second, uh, what was it? The second movie from the 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 little Asian girl from the movie. I can't think of her name. I thought she did a phenomenal job. She she was great. But they made her not want to be online no more. And then they tried to do it with the girl who played Riva. And it, you know, race somehow always plays a part in these you know these stories, and it <laughs> it happens. Um, but it just it just goes to show how some people can can be, um, which I hope honestly that stuff st like dies down. Honestly, I really do. Uh, facts is the shame. Yes, it is. Like I honestly wish some of these people just like chill. You know, like it's Star Wars. Like we all grew up with it. It's it's meant to be fun. And it's, it's meant to have a good time. You know, enjoy everything. Like I feel it feel it's just, you know what it's sad when. I literally just went back to watch Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. It's sad when I feel so much joy and happiness watching these two movies and looking forward to watching this movie uh, over the weekend, uh, the third one, and having that Star Wars feeling. Like, this is a Marvel Star Wars type movie. You know, it's in space and all that, but it's, it's you know, you take all the other stuff out, but essentially it's that type of feel, and it's like, damn... Why can why can't Star Wars get like this? You know why do we have to hold Star Wars to such a pristine way of things? And you know that it's it's just you know we can't revamp it a little bit like Star Trek revamped their whole thing with their movies thanks to J.J. Abrams because he learned from Star Wars like we need some action and everything we don't need to have everybody just sitting here talking the whole time we got a budget let's go and do something and they took the fun stuff from the original Star Wars movies and put it in Star Trek and injected it with a whole mess of just wow I just can't believe I saw that you know that's dope this is this is really cool like I wasn't even a big Star Wars I mean Star Trek fan like that, like the original, original ones until I watched these, these three, uh, recent ones, and because he learned from Star Wars, it was amazing, those Star Trek movies were amazing, we don't do that for the Star Wars stuff, we just gotta keep it always with the same groundedness and <laughs> dirt, sandy, 
sometime we got some snow, you know, uh, back to the sand again. We, I don't know how many times we got to go back to Tatooine. Uh, I don't know uh, how, why we got to do that so much. Um, like there's so many other planets uh, or some forest planet, whatever. So it's just like we do the same thing over and over. It's no progression in a way because they always want to try to please the fans to like, oh, look, we did this. Oh, you remember this with the old movies? We did this again. Hey, you like that? But it's no progression. It keep going back to the old stuff. It is like, dude, why, why, why are we, why are we stuck in this bubble? We in this bubble. Yet, you know, we can't make fun of ourselves. Like, I believe the, the guys who did the Lego movie wanted to do a Star Wars movie. Well, matter of fact, I think that's what they was trying to do, the Solo one. And they didn't like it. Because they poked too much fun at things, and who knows what that would have been like if they would have let that happen. And since they didn't let that happen, so they went on and did this, you know, Beyond the Spider Verse, which we saw with that one, and that kills it. So who knew? Who would have thought that would be like that? If we got, if we would have gave them a chance and let them do the Star Wars movie that they wanted to do, we probably, I'm probably be saying something different right now, honestly. Um, Christy, how you doing? Yep. Hey, y'all, just waving back at y'all. How y'all doing? I didn't see y'all before. But, um, yeah, it's just, Star Wars has always had a place in my heart, but it needs a new, it needs new life. It needs new blood. I know they're going to have these other shows, the the Arcanet or Argatigo, something, whatever, but they're trying to do too much too fast, too soon, and to try to keep up with the Joneses, I feel like, but, and I saw the Star Wars Celebration stuff, and I'm all for women empowerment, and women empowerment, and all that stuff, which is like, was such as, is like the big thing right now, which is crazy, because I could have sworn we had Xena, and, and, you know, Cleopatra 2525, 25, and movies like, uh, uh, what is it, the, uh, God, so many movies. God, anything had like freaking. God, we had a few movies. I can't even think of the names of it right now. Um, God, the one was the one where the, the girl was an assassin. She had an amnesia, and uh, she was with it was with the uh, co-starring with uh, my boy Samuel Jackson. But stuff like that, that type of movie. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, a good kiss, good kiss tonight. Uh, a good kiss, good night. That was a great movie superhero and type of thing, badass. Um, but they trust, they put stuff out and we have actors on the stage talking about the show and you know, they don't know nothing about Star Wars. Like, they just don't know. They just say, oh, it's a very powerful woman. She's a very powerful, yes, yes, powerful woman. And that's all I know about my character. That's all. That's it. She don't, she don't know shit. She, she's just getting a check. Like, I want to see fans actually getting a chance to play a Star Wars character. No matter if it's a uh, a female-dominated role, I don't care. I want to see fans, because I don't see no fans as these actors, you know, playing these you know playing these characters that, on these new shows, because you can tell, because some of the stuff is stale. Um, or just, <laughs> I just want one more lightsaber. I would love a lightsaber battle... Which one, actually, wait, for which one, Daryl? Which lightsaber battle for which one? Actually, that's a good question, because I don't know which one you mean. Um, yeah. God, there's so much I can talk about with Star Wars. Um, probably less of stuff out. I'm trying to, like, tap to everything that has been bothering me for so long right now about Star Wars. I feel like there has to be, like, a part two and a part three. I know for sure, after Ahsoka, I definitely want to say something about talk about it um but at this present time after watching everything so far um star wars i feel like whatever they do right now with the the new batch of stuff like i feel like the cartoon stuff is great like bad batch i love that stuff like the visions i love like i feel like the animated stuff is solid honestly it's solid because we get a chance to see different things and uh, under different, you know, microscope, uh, and you know, so that's fine. I like that stuff, but 
man. In the future movies, just more light and dark force users. Yeah, I would love to see more light and dark force users. That's not related to anybody from the past at all. Like, I don't want to see any black dude or black woman with powers as of the force that's somehow related to Mace Windu at all. I don't want that. No, we don't need to have that. It should just be, they could, could be their own people. You know, I don't want to see a new character that's, you know, that's related to anybody from the Empire at all. We good with that. We don't need it at all. I'm fine. Although I still would like to see some type of like one-off uh, story or like two or three part episode thing of uh, I think Marth Gideon, Moth Gideon. Not is it not not Moth Gideon? No, he's cool, John Esposito. But um, the chick with the all silver um, Stormtrooper outfit from Game of Thrones. I just thought that was a cool character. It, once again, they just they failed on that one. Um, really bad on that one. They could have did really good with that story with her and Finn. Honestly, they could have really done something really great. Um, but we need real stories. Pharmacy? No, I I don't know what her name was. F F something Phasma. Oh my God, Phasma. Yes, Phasma. Um, that's her name. Yes, I I thought Phasma was a dope character um, and was played really well. But they just once again they could have done more and they ruined it. They just ruined it. Like, she didn't have to go out the way she did. You know, or at least let her come back and she lived. I don't know. But Phasma was dope. I just loved that character. I loved the look. It, you know, um, and her and Finn had a good back and forth, honestly. You know, like, who didn't want to, like, cuss out their boss? Uh, you know, or, you know, say they quit and then went back to talk shit to their boss. Who know? Who didn't never want to do that? If You know? And that's what we got with Finn and, and her. Um... Man, there's so much stuff about the Star Wars life. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm with Star Wars, but it's on its... I feel like it's on its last leg. I think it's on... Whatever was going to... I think whatever happens after these shows that's come out, um, these live-action stuff, will be the nail in the coffin, honestly. Like, before we even get Rey back into the fold of anything. Like... It's just not gonna work, bro. Just, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Just, sorry. Like, she's good. Like, she was all right for a moment. And then she just, her, she sucked. She just sucked the rest of the movies. Um, I feel like Star Wars is on the last leg. It's on life support. That's the best way I can say it. Star Wars is, is on life support. That's how I feel right now. Um, can we go back to the old stuff? Yeah, fine. You know, I love going back and watching my old stuff. Like, like I said, I had, I had the movies here, um, that on Blu-ray and stuff. But as for the future, future is dim, bruh. The future is dim, and it's I don't see it going nowhere. I don't see it's progr I don't see it progressing forward to something better. It, we're still just going to keep. Trying to go a little bit, take an inch, but it's going to be, every inch we take, it's going to be a mile walk back every time, like, like, yeah, yeah, man, it sucks, it sucks, life support for real, um, yeah, so I don't know how long this, this live is supposed to go, I think it's for an hour, so I'm going to cut it off now, uh, thank you guys for watching, this is current episode of Bear Night Podcast, I'm going to go. Thank y'all for watching. Um, I'm going to see if I'm going to try to do a, 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 a live TikTok tomorrow night. Uh, depending on if I decide to go see Guardians of the Galaxy or not. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure yet. Because um, I won't get out of work till 9.30. So, who knows? But, um, yeah. This is your boy, <laughs> Jurassic. You know? So, uh, talk to you guys later. Positive vibe old Positive vibes only, people. All right. Hold on. We say making movies in the different areas sound it cool. Yeah, you should have saw it. Yeah, but we we'll talk about that another time. But positive vibes, positive vibes only, people. This is your boy Jurassic, and I'm out. This is the Beast at Night. 
the Bear Night, ooh, Bass Night. I'm just changing up my whole stuff, my whole show. But Bear Night podcast. Peace. I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.